Alright, just clapping over here. <laughs> Don't mind me. Alright, so what I want to do now is add tape around the edges. So go ahead and pull off a piece of tape that's the length of your paper. But here's the thing. If I stick this onto the paper right now, when I go to pull it off, it's going to rip. So take this tape and put the sticky side against your jeans or like a shirt or hoodie or something. And then what it will do is it'll pick up some of that lint and not be as sticky. So right now I'm just putting it on my pants. I'm pulling it off. You can touch it with your hands. You've got an oily face, you can put it on your face or your neighbor's oily face. Just kidding, don't do that. All right, so now it's not quite as sticky. And then I just look, line it up. So it's along the top edge. And then I'm gonna press lightly on the paper and a little bit more firm on the table part where the tape's on the table. All right, so go ahead and tape down all four sides. Each time taking that tape and putting it on a, a different surface so that it doesn't stick too, too well to your paper. And this is where you can kind of decide how big of a border you want on your, your paper, depending on how much overlaps the paper. And then you press it lightly on your paper and a little bit more firm on the sides. Some of you are like, this is awesome. I'm getting all the cat hair off my shirt. Um, what I'm gonna do is line it up with the top. Just leave a little gap. It's not specific right now. And then I'm gonna use a pencil. And just draw a line, horizontal line all the way across. Leave another little gap. Hold it down, draw another line. We want at least four sections. Like right now I have a bottom section that's a little bigger. That's totally fine. But go ahead and, and add those horizontal lines. Okay, now we want to add some vertical lines. So again, we're just going to leave a little gap. Hold your ruler and just add some vertical lines. It's okay if your lines as you're going, they end up being shaped weird. It doesn't matter. The biggest thing is that we want to add a variety of squares or rectangles so that we have spots to create um, four different value scales. Once you've got it down there on the bottom right corner, add your first and last name. And it might be helpful to put the class period. But you don't have to put the class period. If you've got your name on it, that's good. And I'm gonna go. I'm going a little bit slow, just so that I, people that anybody that was a little bit behind has time to catch up. I know some of you are sitting there like, "All right, now what?" Don't worry. All right, now on this this far right column, we're gonna label what we're going to use. So on the far right. Put purple or dark purple. And since we haven't gone over a bunch of like these cool names for colors, 
we're just going to use like dark purple, a lighter purple, and if you want, you can use the word violet. All right. Then underneath dark purple, we're going to write dark green. Actually, let's just do green. There is no really dark green in our paints. Oh, I guess a darker. Yep, I'm going to put dark green. And then below that, let's put orange. And then to the left of your name, you're going to write mixed. You can even write experiment. As artists, we like to experiment. What happens when we try this out? What happens when we mix these colors together? Um, if you choose red, yellow, or blue, and you mix one of those with another, of those you'll get a secondary color so like if you mix red with blue you'd get purple All right so anyway this one would be a mixed paint um, underneath where it says mixed and maybe you wrote experiment underneath I want you to write light plus dark and one reason we're doing that mixing is because on our palette you're going to have to learn how to mix colors but also keep them separated because on our palette like let's say we're adding a light color like yellow and a dark color like blue we do all the mixing on our palette in this case we're going to use the the lid of our paint container as our palette and we'll need to make sure how to practice keeping our paints our solid paints clean so that's why we have this mixed area. It's more of just practicing how to keep paints separated, but also uh, mixing paints to get the colors that you most want. Um, kind of like in basketball, before you start playing basketball, you need to know how to dribble. Before you start painting like crazy, you need to know a few things about your paintbrush. So first off, how hard to press your paint or your paintbrush. When drying, if you're trying to get it darker, you press harder, right? Well, with paint, you don't press harder, right? So just on, a, on your piece of paper, just press, practice this fill. If you feel a lot of tension between where you're pushing and against the surface, then lighten it up a little bit, right? Another thing is, is generally, You'll do pulling strokes or pushing strokes. The other thing that you want to be aware of is when you're doing some of these pulling strokes, some people go like this. They pull quickly. Now what's going to happen with that paint when you pull it quickly? What did you say, Chris? Yeah, it's going to drip on you. So it's going to, you're going to be flicking it's like sweeping a bunch of water. It's going to flick it up, right? I don't know. Some of you sweep water. That would be... I do sometimes. <laughs> Depends on cleaning cement. But anyway, so just make sure as you're pulling the paint, you lift. You don't flick. Now, unless you're going for a certain style, like maybe that you like the style of that, you can do that. In this exercise, I don't want you to flick it though. I want you to lift when you're done doing those pulling strokes. Now, sometimes you can go back and forth, right? You're going to get a feel for it. And I want you to experiment with different ways of, of using your brush. You can do some pulling. Um, if you're ever doing oil paints, you'll have to learn to hold, instead of holding your brush up close, holding your brush further back and then doing some painting like that. Instead of keeping your hand still by resting your wrist on the paper, if your paper's all wet with paint, you might have to lift it up and keep your wrist still by resting your, your shoulder or forearm on the table or whatever surface you're using. All right, so anyway, just, just some tips for how to hold the brush. Um, there's more, but...
Those are some basic ones. All right, when mixing paints, typically you wanna do all the mixing away from where you're painting. But since I only have one screen showing you what I'm doing, I'm gonna be mixing my paint above my picture. Maybe I'll put a piece of paper in between though so that you can see it a little bit better. All right, so I'm gonna choose a dark purple. So there's white, a lighter purple, and then a dark purple. I know on the screen you can't tell, but if you're looking at your palette, you'll be able to see that. Now I'm gonna use, there's, there's a couple ways of doing this. I could use my skinny paintbrush, size six, and then put it on the palette and it's gonna get a little bit of water at a time, like maybe a drop at a time. Or I can use my flat brush, right, to pick up more water. And if this is the first time you're using this brush, you might have to like run your fingers through it a little bit so that it breaks up the bristles. And then I can add a lot more water onto my palette, right? So go ahead and add some water to your palettes, not your mouth. The, the palette could also be considered your mouth. <laughs> I'm glad some of you think I'm funny. I appreciate it. All right, so on my paper, well, let me back up. Um, first off, to dark, get this paint to start working. Right now, it's totally dry. So if I add a little bit of water to my paintbrush, and then I go over my paint with that water, it makes it so that I can actually like gather paint and and use it, right? So on our value scale, since we're starting with this dark purple. We're going to paint that first area with dark purple, right? And we want it to be as dark as possible. So like we said in creating a value scale, if we want it to be darker, we have to have less water and more pigment. Oh, that's a nice dark purple. Right? And then as you're painting this, think about Oh, how am I holding my brush? Am I doing pulling strokes, etc.? I want it to be really dark though. I want it to almost be a black looking color. So I keep going back for more paint. Maybe I need more water in my paint. So I grab some water from my palette. All right, so that's a really nice, good black, dark, 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 I guess not black, but really dark purple. Then I'm gonna get some of the paint off on my palette. All right. And then on the, so when you're, you're creating a value scale, you typically don't want to start with the darks, you want to start with the very light colors. But for this value scale, we're starting with the very darkest so that we know, hey, if it's if I'm in this middle range and it looks like this really dark purple, then I'm doing something wrong. I've got too much pigment. All right? So in this case, we're starting with a really dark. But in most cases, you're going to start really light. Now with my paintbrush, I'm going to rinse out that purple, All right? So now it's just mostly water in my paintbrush. I'm just going to touch the end of the purple and then add it to the very first square. And you don't have to go all the way to the edges of the square, All right? But go ahead and add that first square, really, really light. 
I might actually darken mine just a teeny bit so that you can see it better on the camera. Yours could be lighter than that. As long as you see a teeny bit of purple in it. Now what I like to do, you don't have to do this, but what I like to do is I start with my lightest and I start with my darkest. Then I know I have to get a range of colors, well not colors, a range of intensity of color throughout. So what I tend to do is I start with the dark, start with the light, and then I start with one of these middle areas. So in this case I'm going to use the paint that's on my palette. And I'm just going to do a small little mark. And sometimes I'll use a piece of paper to, to test colors. And then I can move it over. Which, in this case, I'm not going to. I can test it directly on the paper. And then as I paint, I'm like, okay. I think that's good. Um, I might end up having to darken it a little bit more. But for now, that looks good. Right. Now I've got to do something in between these two colors, right? Right here. So maybe I start here and like, oh, no, need more water. So I rinse out my brush, get just water in there. And then I move that around. I also like to leave a little gap in between the colors. What happens if I don't leave a gap? Tristan, what will happen? If I don't leave a gap between the two colors and they're both wet? They'll mix together. They'll mix together, very good, thank you. So, you wanna keep that in mind. So there should be a difference as you go along. So this next one, I need to make it darker. And you notice as I'm going, I'm like, oh man, that one isn't dark enough. Or I have to lighten this one. If you ever need to lighten a color, you could use your paper towel to dab it lighter. Um, another way of doing it though, a way that I prefer, is I get my paintbrush just slightly wet, not fully wet. Like after I dip it into the bucket, I will take off a little excess water on the side of the bucket. But anyway, I go over it and then I dry it with my towel. Go over it, dry it with my towel. That's if I'm trying to lift off a little bit of paint. If I try to if I need to darken a paint, then I just add some water. I can either get it from my palette or directly from the paint itself. So each time you're just comparing the two side by side, does it look darker than the previous one? So if you look at my first two, they almost look the same, right? So I might have to add a little bit more purple in there. A little bit. But it should be lighter than this one. So we're seeing a distinct difference. You get some there. Now you can see it a little bit better with the lighting. All right, so then we get down to this second to last one. We gotta get it a lot darker. It's about right. It's a little bit too dark. Remember if it's too dark, you just Lift some of that paint.
And then as you look at it, you might say, oh, I need to go over, I need to make these alterations. Maybe, maybe I don't like how these two are so close together. Maybe I want to make this a little bit darker. And that's okay, you can go back and make those alterations. Alright, so now I feel like it's a better uh, value scale. Right? So here's the next thing I want to show you. Cleaning your palette. I typically will get some water in my paintbrush, wipe it around inside your palette, because I don't want to mix this purple with dark green. And then I'll use a paper towel to just dry that area up. The cool thing is you all have your own palette, so nobody else is going to be making your palette dirty other than yourself. And a little tip, if you get paint inside your palette where you don't want it, when it's dry, and I wait till it's dry so they don't lose a bunch of this good paint inside my um, ovals. When it's dry, I just paint over with just water over these corners and then dry them up with a paper towel so that you save your paint but you are able to clean up some of these edges. Like I'd probably do that around this green spot. All right, now this dark green, we're gonna do that a little bit differently. We're not gonna just do separate colors. With this dark green, we're gonna do some layers, right? And with watercolor, you're often going to use layers to create um, value or show atmospheric um, perspective, that sort of thing. So in this case, I'm gonna rinse out my brush really well. Right, then I'm going to use my flat brush because it's a little bit bigger to get some water onto my palette. Now this time, since we're doing a gradient, you may want to start or keep that gradient all the same tone. So. If I add a teeny bit of green, and we're using the dark green, mix that in with all that water, right? That way we can add a gradient little by little. So I start with this really light green, and I paint from the end. i got to add a little bit more green. I paint from the end all the way up to the second to last color. That, the very... Ignore the cowbells. Alright, so... I go right up until that last dark green. So, right now, my the painting surface in this green area is all colored in but really lightly up until this last square. So then I add a teeny bit more green to my palette. Oh, I need to add a little bit more. It's always good to, before you start painting like crazy to test it a little bit. And I want you, as you're doing this, I want you to realize what's going on with the paint. What's going on with the paper? Like, do you feel a difference when you go over it multiple times? Is it getting harder to work with? Is it more difficult to work with? What happens to the paint when you layer on? Like, is it blending? It should be blending. 
if it's too wet, it's going to blend in a weird way, where some of the edges will be darker than the center. And then just add a little bit more paint at a time to gradually go from that light to dark. Just be leery of adding too much paint. You can always add more, it's a lot easier to just add more. But if you add too much, it's, hard to, it's harder to go back. Then as you get towards the end, I sometimes will skip using my palette because I'm getting to the darker areas. Then when you get to the very last one, you add a little bit of paint, and a, or a little bit of water and a lot of paint to make that really a dark green. One thing I want you to notice is with the dark purple, when you got to the darkest area, it was almost a black, right? Well, with green, and it always depends on the paints you're using, but with the paints we're using, they're, they're pretty true to their colors. So like with green, when I get to the end, even though it's as dark as I can get it, it might not look super dark. I move my light around so maybe you can see that a little better. Well, kind of hard to see. But right there you can get a little bit better view of what it looks like going from dark to light. Now some of these are pretty similar, right? So I might have to go back and then make that more of a gradual process like between here and here right between here and here. Another way of doing this is taking from down lower and then pulling some of the paint backwards, some of the darker paint. This video is going to have lots of bells in it. We just need people to whistle. And then have bells and whistles in it. There we go. Alright, so I'm going to explain the next two things and then you're going to be on your own to do them. So go ahead, pause what you're doing, look up at the screen for just a second. Orange, you're going to do the same thing. You can choose to do a step value scale or a gradient value scale. It's up to you. Um, whatever you think you're probably going to use more in your artwork, you'll do that with orange. And then on mixed, when you start mixing stuff, one thing to really think about is maybe you want to use one area. Let's say I was doing... Um, yellow and red. So maybe the red would be in one spot and the yellow would be another spot. But pay close attention to make sure you don't muddy 
those colors. Meaning, if I don't have a clean paintbrush, there's a little bit of red on it, and then I try and mix my yellow, I'm going to end up mixing my yellow with red to make an orange. But you don't want to do that with the actual solid paints. You want to do the mixing away from the solid paints on this palette area. So you might get some red, add it over here. Some more red, add it over here, and so on. Maybe it's a really strong red over here and a really strong yellow. And then do some of the mixing of the yellow on your paper, going from yellow to yellow red, um, which would be like a yellow orange to an orangish to a red, right? So just experiment with that on the mixing. The important thing is that you have value scales going from light to dark. When I'm grading these, what I'm looking at is comparing, all right, is there a distinct difference between each one, right? So like these two are really close. So maybe darken that one a teeny bit. Mm, it's hard to tell, but that's what I'm looking for. Any questions on what we're doing?